Hey Magic fans, welcome back. This is your captain speaking here on Captain Clive's MTG. We're going to go through our six draft boxes we just opened from a case and talk about value and what it's worth. So as usual, um, don't forget, comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Subscription's right here, description down below. In the description, you'll find links to the TCG Player Store, eBay, and all kinds of good jazz <clears throat> where you can buy these cards. They're already going to be posted. Uh, if you haven't watched my videos before, when box opening series starts, within a couple days, almost all the cards get online. Or a week. Just takes time to open the boxes, sort the cards, get them listed, all that good jazz. So, you got to stay on top of it. So, helps keep the channel sponsor free if you go buy some cards. Otherwise, you're going to, I mean, we're going to have to do meal prep and row gain and sham wow videos. And nobody's going to like that. So, let's not get there. So, moving on. As we go through this, don't forget how this works. Anything a dollar or less uh, that is rare or higher or special insert gets $1. Um, or I'm sorry, $2 or more. Otherwise, it's a dollar bulk. So, with that being said, we don't do uncommons. We don't do foil uncommons and commons, even though some of them are worth a lot of money sometimes on weird stuff. Uh, it's just too hard to predict, and the market swings too much to put them in there seriously to begin with. Uh, so maybe these could be higher. Hell, maybe these could be lower, depending on how the market swings. So start with the box toppers. So as you can see, we only got one good box topper. We've got an Amulet of Vigor going for like 20 bucks. Uh, the other five, pretty much useless. I mean, Thought Vessel's okay, I guess. Expedition Map's all right. Um, but let's be honest. In my personal opinion... The only, I don't like these box toppers. I just don't think they're good enough. The only box toppers I've liked since we've had box toppers come out um, all the way back since even, um, you know, Crimson Val, Midnight Hunt, which I love Midnight Hunt, but I still didn't like the box toppers um, in those sets. The only box topper set I like the, the only set I like the box toppers in uh, that's been recent has really been Lord of the Rings. Uh, the ability to have the alternate art cards, um, that were Lord of the Rings uh, remakes of current good cards was phenomenal. Now, we paid for those box toppers, so, you know, because the price of those boxes were double these or even more, depending on what kind of box you bought. So, I mean, it's half a dozen 160 other. Honestly, just stop putting box toppers in draft. Um, because even with the set boxes, the box toppers did really nothing when it came to set value. So... I mean, just make it a slot inside the pack, and let's just be done with this whole box topper insert thing. Let's just let's just stop, can we, please? Anyway, so we've done that. So talk about rares. We got a lot of rares, obviously, some pretty good ones too. Uh, these are the two most expensive rares in the set. Tide Binder has went up to twenty dollars, uh, which is crazy insane. Uh, this is still floating around fifteen. Um, because of that, a couple hitting a couple of these in your box can almost pay for the whole box. So that is nice. Um, but at the end of the day, because there are more rares than there are, let's say mythics, the odds of hitting one of these are normally pretty slim. Uh, you may get one a box, which may be good enough. Uh, but there are boxes, especially ones that I opened that didn't have them at all. Um, I mean, $20 tide binder is great, but I think I only seen, Maybe two or three of these, so like, it feels like a mythic, just like the Wandering Throne, does, or the Roaming Throne does. So it doesn't help things, but that's to be expected with rares because there's so many rares. There's um, what 100, 120 rares or something. I uh, don't know the exact amount, um, but there's a lot. Seventy, hell, who knows? Uh, there's way more than there are mythics. Let's just go there. I'll look that number up later. Uh, as far as the foils go, I mean. We got three, six, nine, twelve mythics. So out of six boxes, that's, or I'm sorry, foils, two foils a box, no mythic hits. The only one we got worth money was probably this one as a rare. Uh, that's around eight bucks. The rest of them, not so much. Uh, the Kite Sail Lieutenant was pretty expensive for a while, but it's dropped in price below $2, so even for the foil, uh, which is kind of crazy uh, looking forward. So yeah. Now, mythics. So, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Roughly around five mythics a box. That is our average. Um, and this looks actually okay. We've got several doubles of a lot of mythics, even the Cavern of Souls I was bitching about. We only got one ancient one, but that's fine. We got more of him in other boxes. Um, only one Galta. Uh, we got a couple of blood guys, a couple of greens. We didn't get any whites. Well, we got one white one. It's alternate art. Um, but here's the thing. Is, is this. The Cavern of Souls is a big dollar hit, which if you can't get into a box... It's just crazy. We should be at least one Cavern of Souls per box. And um, I think we've got a total of three currently. So out of 24 boxes, we hit one Cavern of Souls every... Um, God, what is that? Seven's 21. I mean, technically, eight. Every eight boxes, you get one Cavern of Souls. That's just fucking insane. Uh, and we'll go over a video about that later. But we had a decent amount here. So, all that said, let's uh, scoot these little fellows over and go into the handy dandy notebook. So, here we are. We're on this section here. Long story short, we had a box. First box was 82, second 117, third for 77, the fourth was 129, fifth was 65, the last one was 139 for a total average of 10150, which is technically better than what we had in our first draft boxes which the average was 87. So why do you think that is? Well, gee, let's just think about the fact that we hit two Cavern of Souls and we hit no Cavern of Souls in here. So if there's an extra $60 in this, that would be 97 and close to 100. So why was it more expensive over here? Because we actually hit Cavern of Souls like we're supposed to. So, and we'll go over that a little later as well. Again, uh, to kind of reiterate with the box topper, you can see the box toppers are here. $2, 2 2 0 2 $22, 2 This is obviously the amulet. Um, for rares, 55 35 42 82 34 90 As you can guess, these this is where the Cavern of Souls was hit. Was in these two here. Plus, the rares were extremely good. Uh, the last box, we hit uh, a Roaming Throne uh, plus a Tide Binder. I mean, that's... That's freaking $35 just right off the top. If we didn't hit those, this would have been around $55, which you can see that up here where we didn't hit those kind of things. So you can see hitting the good hitting the good rares will get you good value, but not hitting good rares, I mean, get you $34, $35. It's very easy for the rares not to be good enough because there's so many of them that are bad and only so few that are good. Now with the Mythics, it's kind of the same way, but with a smaller quantity. I mean, 47, 29, 45, 35, 60, 25. I mean, Jesus. These are just some really bad mythic numbers. Um, and the Cavern of Souls might even been up here because it says 60, but I really think it was here because I'm pretty sure that the Cavern of Souls box uh, that we got our Cavern of Souls in only had four mythics. So the other three mythics were only worth fifteen dollars, with the Cavern of Soul I think is worth thirty. Um, so it's pretty sad. And if we didn't have Cavern of Souls in these two boxes, a one hundred nine box, a ninety nine dollar box, one box at one seventeen, that is terrible um, return on investment. I mean, you look at this. If you wanted to do a mass box opening to make money. Uh, you lose 20% easy, not counting any kind of overhead you have or manhandling fees uh, for people to actually do the work. 20% of this means $81. To break even, you'd have to buy these boxes at $81 a box. That's never going to happen. Even Rudy Online sells for $89, uh, which is the best you're going to get. So what should you do when it comes to opening boxes? I think we need to get back into the, the method where I used to um, I would buy a play set of four uh, from individuals for the whole set price. Uh, I think the set price for this is going for like two fifty, two seventy. Let's say it's three hundred even. Um, you know, we had twelve boxes um, of draft at a hundred. That's twelve hundred dollars. Then we had set at one thirty, um, and we opened a collectors 
if, if this is a $300 set, to buy four of each, to buy the set four times would be $1,200. You could not buy the set, not buy the collectors, and save all that extra money, which is close to two, two to three grand probably you would save. Um, and you wouldn't have to do all the sorting or anything else. So we're really in a market where mass box openings is not the way to go. Um, and if you're thinking about doing mass box openings to make money, you are sadly mistaken. Uh, and if you do make money, kudos for you, but I'm here to tell you you're not done the math right. Um, so yeah, so stay tuned tomorrow. Um, I'm going to go through and show you the mythic pull from all 24 boxes because I really think we need to address the fact that Wizards is purposely making cards harder to get than they should be because everybody knows how they love to just lay the, lay the, lay the big dong to us. So until next time, be kind. Hope to see you across from the game table later, player. <sighs> All this energy for fucking nothing.